Welcome to the Office Developer Screencast Virtual Tour. In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about creating and customizing document information panels with InfoPath 2007. A document information panel is a user interface component that's provided by Office desktop applications such as Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And what we'll see is, out of the box, without you doing any customization, you get an automatic integration point between the Office desktop application and documents that are saved using content types in Windows SharePoint Services 3.0. And after exploring the out-of-the-box functionality we get with document information panels, we'll take it one step further by creating and customizing a document information panel using InfoPath 2007 to add a user interface component onto Word into the desktop when we're dealing with a specific type of document. Okay, I'm going to start this demo as Brian Cox, one of the dedicated members of the Litware Corporation. And we have a plain team site created from the WSS v3 blank site template. And when we want to work with document information panels, the first thing we should do is to start working with content types. So let's say we want to create a document information panel for a Litware memo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a document template for the content type that we're going to create. So I'll open up Word 2007 and I won't do very much with this template other than say uh, Litware memo and add text here and then we'll go up to this section right here and make this a lot bigger and <clears throat> now that I've gotten that I think that's enough for our demonstration I'm going to do a save as and I'll go up on my hard drive and I'll create a new directory called litware and inside there I'll take this and I'll save it as a template. And so now that I've saved this as a template, let's go back to the team site. And I want to create a content type. Now before I create a content type, I want to add some metadata columns and it's always best to go and create site columns for that. So I'm going to go to site settings and then I'm going to go to the galleries. In a second I'm going to create a content type, but first I'm going to create some site columns. So let's create our first site column, and I'll just call this sender. That's going to be the party that's sending out the memo. And I'll just leave that as text, and I'll put this in a new custom group called Litware. And also we'll require that this contains information, so you can't submit this without putting something inside there. Now that we've gotten the sender, let's create a second one and we'll create one called sent and this is going to record the date the memo was sent out on and so we'll go ahead and add that inside here once again we'll put this into the litware custom group and we'll just say that this is going to be date only and I could assign a default value here but I think what I'll do is I'll leave it unassigned so we can show different options for uh, setting that later. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more field inside here which is called audience. So when the memo gets sent out, does it get sent out to the whole company or just one department? And I'll just have this as a simple text string inside there. And once again I'll put this into a group called Litware. And I'll go ahead and choose OK. Okay, so now what we should be able to verify is that we have our three different site columns that we want to use. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to the site settings page and this time I'm going to create a new content type. I'll create a new content type and this will be called Litware Memo. And when I create this content type, I'm going to inherit mine from the built-in document content type. And once again, for clean housekeeping, when I create my content type, I'm going to put it in a special new group called Litware. 
Okay, now that I've created this content type, I want to add a couple different site columns to it. So I'm going to choose Add Site Columns. And I'm going to go down and look at the Litware site columns. And so I want to know who the sender is. I want to know the date it was sent. And I want to know the audience it's being sent to. And I'll go ahead and choose OK. And then the last thing I want to do with this content type is to associate a document template with it. And that's the first thing I created inside this demo. So I'm going to go to the Advanced Settings page for this content type. And I'm going to choose to upload a new document template. And if I drop down here and I go back to my directory, there's my template right inside there. I'll go ahead and choose that. And I'll choose to copy that back up. So now I have a content type that's all ready. OK, the next thing we have to do is create a document library. So I'll start by going to the Create page. And then I'll go click on the link to create a new document library. I'll create a new document library. I'll call this Memos. And when you create a document library, what you'll want to do is configure it to use your new content type. So the way that we do that is we start by going to the Document Library Settings page. Now, in order to be able to configure content types, you have to click on Advanced Settings. Then you have to enable the option for Allow Management of Content Types. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And when I do that, back on the Document Library Settings page, a new section named Content Types shows up. And so there's a link to add from existing site content types. And so I should be able to go down and search for the Litware group and find the Litware Membo content type I created earlier. So I'll go ahead and add that as one of the supported content types in this document library. Also notice that there is the content type named document that was built into the document library by default. So I'm going to go ahead and take that and I'm going to say delete this content type so that now there's only one content type supported for this document library, and that's my custom Litware memo content type. Now, just to see what things are going to look like from the user perspective, let's go ahead, click on Memos, and let's go back and click on the New menu and pick Litware Memo. When I go ahead and choose that, it's going to open up our, our document template, create a new document, and let me go ahead and make some changes. So I can go ahead and let's say that I add some meaningful content down here. Wonderful memo the company's really going to enjoy. Uh, and up top, notice that this is the document information panel. Now it came up by default. If it doesn't come up, I can go ahead and I can dismiss it. And if I ever want to bring this up as a user, I'm going to go to the File menu drop it down, go to the Finish menu, and go up and choose Properties. And when I choose Properties, that brings up this panel right here. Another interesting point is you see that the fields from my content type are automatically shown by the Office application, Word in this case, so that users can update these metadata properties through the Document Information panel. Let's try one more experiment. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Let's say the user doesn't see the document information panel. And let's say the user just tries to save this document. Clicks on Save, tries to save it as Memo 1. And all of a sudden, Word is realizing that this user is violating the data constraints because there is a field called Sender that has to be filled in. So it's telling the user it's invalid data. And the only choice they have is to say, go to Document Information Panel. So that gets brought up. And now the user can come through there, fill in his name in this case right here, put a particular date in place, and pick an audience. So in this case, he's going to send it to the company. And now this particular user can try to try a resave. And now the document is saved back to the SharePoint Content Database. And after it's saved, what I want to do is I want to go back and take a look at this document. And I'm not going to open it up in Office. I'm going to open it up just to say Edit Properties. And you can see that here's the metadata that that user added in, and it gets saved back into SharePoint. 